Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you guys an all SSD slash NVMe NAS that can also work as a home server, private cloud, or any other or S or virtualization platform that you want. Now, I don't know if you've seen this video or not, but basically I did a free NAS for a friend of mine out of his garbage junk computer. And when I told him about it, this was his answer. Now, apparently some people have like standards up here. So the link station folks saw the video and said, we have a device that we think you and your friend are going to like. So they sent me the link station N1, which is like a mini NAS slash home server. And by the way, this is my very first review like ever. Okay, so bear with me for any kind of like screw up. I did get the device for free and for me in all counts, that counts as paid promotion. However, I can say whatever the heck I want and that will be true for any kind of product that I review in the future. The Link Station N1, in my opinion, is a really pretty cool device. It was created by a group of friends that are tech enthusiasts and they're based in China and they launched the product a while back, well, not that long ago, but around 2023, I believe, in Indiegogo. It is powered by an Intel CPU N5105, so it does support virtualization and IOMMU through the Intel's uh, VTD technology. And it also supports transcoding because it comes loaded with an iGPU. It has 16 gigabytes of low power DDR4 RAM, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5, 128 gigabytes of eMMC internal storage. It has also a total of four NVMe and two SSD slash hard disk drive bays. It comes with a bootable four gigabyte USB drive loaded with a free license of Unray, and it has an audio and HDMI ports. It also features a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, and a 10 gigabit type C USB port. Now, right off the bat, one of the things I really enjoyed about it is the fact that, you know, this thing looks like a gaming console. I mean, it looks modern, it's compact, and, and seriously, it fits on the palm of my hand as it's the size of an A5 sheet. But then again, I have like gorilla hands, you know? <laughs> Another thing to notice is that these guys, like myself, they seem to be super fans of Linkin Park. They retail for 390 pounds here in the UK. You do get free shipping and a license for Enraid. If you use my discount code, Digital Mirror, I believe you get an extra 5% off. Also, since the price per gigabyte on NVMe and SSD is much, much higher than a mechanical drive, we will be using only two Western Digital Black NVMe drives of two terabytes for this demo. And I did purchase these drives. So, you know, please show me some love and click on subscribe and like the video. <laughs> okay, now that we looked at the features and the cost, let's get the show on the road. Now, installing the drives is a breeze. Just flip the link station over, open the compartments. Notice that we have the USB stick there, and this is what has the Enraid license or the Enraid OS. So if we want to install another OS, we have to remove this, or at least not boot from it. Now pull this little lever here, slide this little stick and let it go. Easy peasy. Now I made a mistake here. I was paying way too much attention to the camera uh, than to what I was doing. And I didn't insert the NVMe all the way. And then I was wondering why the link station wasn't recognizing uh, the, my, my drives. Just make sure it goes all the way. Now I could have reshot the video, but I'd rather you guys see the mistake in case you do it as well. Now that we have our drives installed, let's go to the software. Now let's connect the RJ45 cable and power it on. Wait a few minutes and then try the local DNS by typing http colon slash slash tower dot local. But if that doesn't work, have a look at your DHCP server and use the IP address. If none of this stuff works, well then just plug it into the HDMI port and try to go through the monitor. <laughs> now, once you access the interface, enter the initial credentials, which are root. And for the password, just put one, two, three, four, five, six. The very first thing that I did was upgrade the system to its latest version. And to do this, just click on tools and update OS, click on check updates and update, then go back to the main dashboard and click on reboot. And that's it. After restarting, you can check the new version. Now let's change the default password for something better than 123456. Click on users, root user, type in the password and save. Job done. 
easy. Now, let's change the name of the link station to something a little bit more cooler. In the dashboard, just click on the little cog wheel. I'm naming mine All Might NAS. Do you guys know which anime series that is? Let me know in the comments. Apply and done. Let's just set up a static IP and DNS servers. Click on settings, network settings, change the IP address assignment to static, um, and then change the IP to, well, whatever you like. Just make sure it matches your network ID and that IP is available. The DNS, I'm leaving mine just pointing to Cloudflare and, you know, to Google. I'll click apply and go to the IP address you just set up. If it hangs, just wait for five minutes and then hit the power button on the device and wait for it to shut down. That did happen to me, by the way, so the device needed to be restarted. All right, cool. Now, let's pimp this NAS a little bit. Now, I don't really like this light background, so click on settings, display settings, dynamics color theme, and let's select black, but you can select whatever you want. And then the letters, let's make them all white. And by the way, since we're here, let's just select a new icon as well. <laughs> it's exciting, right? Now for the main event, let's create the array. Let's click on main, scroll down, and let's just select three slots to get rid of, you know, all this junk here. Now, I know that you are super tempted to just do something like this, right? In our case, one parity and one disc, you know, but well, just Hold on your horses there for a second. Now, NVMEs or SSDs are very different from mechanical drives for obvious reasons, but they rely on a process called trim, which is kind of like garbage collection for the drive, and it ensures that the drive remains performant, and it also increases its longevity. When the data is deleted from an SSD, the operating system typically marks the space as available, but doesn't physically remove the data from the drive. The trim command tells the SSD which blocks of data are no longer being used so that the SSD can erase them in the background. Now, this creates a problem when we want to use parity drives, which is the drive that will safeguard your data in case, well, the data drive just dies. So we need to be extra careful when setting up parity with SSD and VME drives. And even the array documentation states itself. So what we need is a file system that deals with trimming and parity like a champ. What we need is my favorite file system of all time, ZFS. Now to do this, we will create a pool instead. We do, however, have a problem. The latest stable version of an array, which is 6.12.13 at least for now, requires that you have an array in order to have a pool. So we have two choices here. You can either upgrade to version 7 beta 2, which supports pools without arrays, or we can do what many people do out there, which is using a dummy load drive just for the array and forget about it. Let me show you guys what I mean. Let's power down the link station and I have installed an old SSD, but I also put in a dummy USB stick uh, that I just found in my drawer just for demonstration purposes. But you can either choose one or the other or even both, it's up to you. I know it's not ideal, but it does work. And I don't want to be playing with beta versions for things like my data. Now, after rebooting, click on main, and now we can see all our drives listed below. You can either choose a USB or the SSD. Now, in my case, I'm going to use the SSD. Now, you can see that upon selecting the disk, the start button becomes available. Now, let's create a pool and give it a name. I will just call it, you know, storage and select two slots, because I only have two drives. And now let's select the NVMe two terabyte drives. Click on storage, and under file system, let's select ZFS. Since I only have two drives, I am selecting mirror, which means one is failover drive in case the other one, drive, uh, the other one dies. Click apply and done. Finally, click start. Let's click on the format arrow and click format. And that's it. We have a NAS configuration set up using NVMEs. Now, I really hope that you guys understand as well why I did things the way that I did. You can also create a cache by setting up an additional extra pool, but since I only have two NVMe drives, now if you have better ideas, by all means, let me know in the comments. Now, let's create our shares. Click on shares, and first, let's move all these shares out of the array. Click on app data um, and primary storage, Let's put storage, which is what we just created, and click on apply. And then just repeat the process for all the other shares. 
Now let's create a new share called media. The primary storage is going to be, well, storage, which is the label we gave it, add share. Now for the settings, let's just export so we can use Samba and click done. Oh, and one more thing before we map this into Windows, we are also going to need a user for, um, so that we can access this because otherwise the root user is not gonna work. Now let's copy a file and test the write speed. And then let's do the same thing just for the read speed. Now in terms of speed, I can't really tell any difference from my TrueNAS RAID Z with three and a half inch mechanical drives. It's the exact same speed with the caveat that the three and a half inch uh, NASes is a lot cheaper per gigabyte. I think that to really take advantage of the NVMe, we would really need a 10 gigabit uh, NIC on the link station. So what does that mean? I mean, should we just ignore this device and just throw it in the bin? Well, not for me. I wanted a NAS that was quiet, energy efficient, and that would allow me to run all of my commodity, you know, home Docker apps easily. And this device is quiet as a mouse. You can't hear anything from it. And in terms of energy, it's consuming 10.6 watts while on idle. And I've seen it go as low as eight and a half, nine watts. It's also stylish and a modern unit. So at least in my opinion, which has some fancy LEDs. So, you know, for those of you that like that kind of stuff. And also being a metal hat, I really love the Linkin Park homage logo. At least I hope that's what it is. Finally, I can transfer, you know, the commodity containers like AdGuard and uh, homepage, Jellyfin. So let's do that next. Click on apps and install the plugin. Let's do Jellyfin, for example, because that's the only app that requires the iGPU, at least for now. So let's type Jellyfin, and this first one looks fine. Next, let's open the advanced view in the top right corner, and in extra parameters, enter uh, minus minus device equals slash dev slash drive for, for drivers. Then click on path media and let's select our media folder that we just created earlier, remember? We can check that the container uh, is running on the Docker by just clicking on the Docker tab. Now let's copy this IP address here and proceed to the Jellyfin configuration. From here on out, um, it's just a very straightforward configuration. Just, you know, set the username and password, have the library, and well, just choose the content type that you want. Now add a folder and point it to slash media, which is the folder we mapped earlier during the Docker configuration. And that's it, you are done. You can now log in and start watching your media. And I mean, just, just look how nicely it is streaming. Now there's one last tip to enable transcoding, which is using the iGPU. And to do this, we're gonna to have to click on the sandwich menu on the top and then select settings and then select dashboard. Then go to playback and transcoding and enable hardware acceleration and then just select video acceleration API. That's it, you're done. Now we can have a look at the CPU, but it doesn't really seem to be like heavily under load. And if we check each stop as well, it gives us a clear idea of the amount of RAM and the cores that we are using and, you know, seems fine. Now, one last thing, if you wanna change the LED colors and the beeping, you can always visit uh, your IP address colon 50,000, which is the port. Uh, it's in Mandarin, I believe, or, or Cantonese. I don't know, I couldn't really tell you, but you can use your browser, you know, translate built-in feature and, and just translate that. That's what I did at least. Now, I am 100% going to keep my Link Station N1. It serves as a super quiet and incredibly energy efficient device. So it's good for the wallet and for the environment. Of course, there is definitely room for improvement. The 2.5 gigabit NIC is good, but for this type of configuration, you really should be, at, you know, you should at least have an extra option for a 10 gigabit ethernet port. That way it would be an absolute killer device. I also think that we would benefit a lot more for either having three and a half inch slots that we could build an array with a lot more space, like four, six, or even 16 terabytes, or just have everything NVMe. And another thing I would like to see is a version of the Link Station N1 without any OS. Other than that, I am really happy with my new NAS and mini server. Don't forget to subscribe. And as for the logo,